I'm not going to spend much time on work. And don't look shocked. It's not that I don't think it's tremendously important because it is. We've got to accept responsibility. We've got to accept the fact that we've got to perform. And as I tell the kids all over America today, now is the best time you'll ever have in life to get ahead. Now is the most opportune time in America that it has ever been to get ahead. Here's what I say. If you show up for work on time, and stay there until the appointed departure time. If you do what they pay you to do, and then they pay you, then nobody owes anybody anything. Now, if you want to raise, get there a few minutes early. Ask for extra things to do. Be cheerful and positive and optimistic and helpful. Don't goof off and try to get out of work. Deliberately seek the boss to find extra work and then I will absolutely guarantee you a raise in short order. Now your current employer might not be the one to give you the raise. <laughs> but somebody down the street's going to see what you're doing and they're going to say, that's the boy I want working for me. That's the girl I want working for me because he or she are doing more than they're paid to do. That's the way you get a raise. Oh, don't misunderstand. You've got to work. You, you can't be like this old boy down home. <laughs> and you're going to find out earlier there are an awful lot of old boys down home. Somebody, <laughs> at least there were when I was down there, uh, somebody asked him how long he'd been working for his company, and he said, ever since they threatened to fire me. <laughs> <laughs> so that's about the size of it, yeah? But here's what we've discovered. If you've got a good self-image, if you have your goals set in life, if you've got the right mental attitude, nobody has to tell you, go to work. That just follows naturally. So this is what we're going to work on, and you've got to have a desire to succeed you can't just casually want the good things in life. It's got to become a passion for you. Your dream has got to be more ju than just an idle thought. You've got to be willing to build a foundation under it, and that's for sure. And we're going to be taking these steps, and quite obviously, ladies and gentlemen, I believe that these steps are what is necessary. But let me, let me identify to you what one of the major problems in America is. One of the problems is, you see, we have said to people, all of these things are available. We've shown them the big homes, the big cars, the swimming pools, the jet set, the, you know, that style of living that a lot of people say, yeah, I'd kind of like that. And then on the other side of the ledger, we have said everybody not only can get these things, but everybody deserves these things. America is a rich and affluent land, and everybody can get them. Then we have another segment of society that says that crime is caused by poverty. With one segment saying you deserve these things and you ought to have them. And another segment saying that crime is caused by poverty, we subliminally, subconsciously plant a thought. Don't wait to get it. Go get it right now. There has never been a definitive study that establishes any correlation between crime and poverty. During the Great Depression, the crime rate was much lower in 1939 than it was in 1930, at the end of a decade of the roughest depression our country has ever had. So what we're saying is let's start climbing some steps. You see, we could draw you an elevator to the top, but I'd have to be honest and say the elevator doesn't work. You're going to have to start taking these steps, and you're going to have to take them one at a time. But I've discovered that people don't mind taking the steps. If you tell them where they are, Show them how many there are, and then tell them exactly how to climb the steps. But you see, you got to climb the steps. You can't skip them. On September the 15th, 1944, in Jackson, Mississippi, at the YWCA, at exactly 18 minutes after 8 o'clock, I saw the prettiest little girl standing over by the Nickelodeon. Now, some of you won't know what a Nickelodeon is. That's a jukebox, okay? <laughs> And I thought to myself, boy, what I'd really like to do is I'd like to go over there and I'd like to grab her in my arms and I'd like to start hugging her and kissing her right now. That's exactly what I wanted to do. But if I had, she wouldn't be sitting here as my wife of over 30 years today because I would have skipped too many steps. <laughs> <laughs> so I did something real original. I walked up to her and I said, hi. <laughs> And she said, hi. <laughs> and the first thing you know, since it was a dance, there we were, a little YWCA dance, and we were dancing. And I got a telephone uh, number that night, and we had a lot of telephone calls. And, and then one day I said, hey, we ought to be going out. And she said, okay. 
So we had a date, then we had another one and another one, and then, you know, it wasn't but two years and two months and 11 days and one hour later that she became my very own, but we took some steps along the way. I don't care how bright you are in school, you cannot move from two times two equals four into analytical geometry. You got to take some steps. Now the mistake a lot of people make is they get on one step and sit there. Uh, you know, that's not what I'm talking about either. What I'm talking about is taking these steps and then you will get these things. A lot of people say, well, well, what do you do to get started? Well, let me tell you a little story. A number of years ago I heard a philosopher say, you are where you are because that's exactly where you want to be. And boy, that sounded so philosophical too, you know. I went all over the country saying, you are where you are because that's exactly where you want to be. And the wise old owls in the audience would nod, you know, and say, that's right, that's exactly right. You know, isn't it amazing the number of us that want to sound philosophical? And then one night I was in Birmingham, Alabama on my way to Meridian, Mississippi, and the roads were under repair. So I stopped at a service station to get directions, and the young attendant not only gave me the directions, but he was kind enough to draw me a map. He said, now, sir, if you will follow these directions as I have laid them out, I'll guarantee you you'll get to Meridian with plenty of time to spare. Well, I followed the directions exactly as he laid them out, but one hour later, I was exactly 45 miles further from Meridian. <laughs> than I had been when I got the directions. Now, folks, I wasn't there because that's where I wanted to be. <laughs> Man, I was tired and sleepy. I wanted to be in bed. I was there because some dude gave me the wrong directions. And I'm going to look at you dead center and say this. If you're broke, I don't really believe that's what you want. If you're despondent, I can't believe that that's what you want. If you're down in the dumps, if you're negative, if you're miserable and all those things, I don't believe that's what you really want. I believe that maybe, just maybe, you might be there because somebody has given you some wrong directions. If you want to see an awesome clip of a young Keanu Reeves, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there. I hope something gets out there that is magic. Um, you know, and if not, I'll just be sad and cry.